Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma bada habita billah uh, from the lessons that we can learn about love, about muhabba and muhabba to nas, you know, loving one another and muhabba to Allah and loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which obviously are two different things which we need to take heed of and learn the differences uh, from an athar of the salaf <clears throat> the author of Yahya bin Mu'ad radiallahu ta'ala anna rahmatullahi alayhi rahmatin wasi'ah he said haqiqat al-muhabba innaha la tuzid bil-bir wa la tanqas bil-jafa and this is in Sifat al-Safwa Yahya bin Mu'ad rahimahullah ta'ala he mentions and this is about the love that you have between people loving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says that the real love is that it doesn't increase with a righteous deed or with, with goodness towards a person, nor does it decrease with uh, maybe harshness towards a person. This is just showing that the love for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not whimsical, meaning someone may make a mistake you don't just drop them like that. And perhaps they do something good and you don't just love them only because they're doing good things for you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. As far as love for the uh, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and trying to gain his love, <clears throat> before we read another athar of the salaf, Let's look at what Ibn al-Qayyim mentions. He mentions 10 things that are the reasons for attaining Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love. So we need to write this down. We need to write this down or at least concentrate and contemplate and strive to implement these things in our lives. He mentions the first thing Ibn al-Qayyim mentions. He says that the, the things that one will gain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said the first thing is reading the Quran reading and reciting the Quran contemplating it understanding its meanings and desiring to understand it and practicing it he said the second thing is a taqarrab illallahi he said it is the second thing is to seek to draw nearer to Allah by doing the extra prayers and extra ibadat after you do your fara'id, your wajib, your wajibat, meaning instead of just your five daily prayers to pray those sunnah prayers, that's your nawafil. Instead of just fasting Ramadan, fasting the six days of shawal and fasting the other times, fasting Mondays and Thursdays. You know, increasing your ibadah, the extra uh, duties. This will also help you to gain the love of Allah. He mentioned the third thing. He said, Dawam dhikrihi ala kulli hal bi lisan wa qalb wa amal wa hal. He said, and the, the third thing is continual, making it a continual practice to uh, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make dhikr. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, wallahu akbar. All the various forms of dhikr and adhkar to remember it under all circumstances, with the tongue, with the heart, and through our deeds. He mentioned the fourth thing, fourth way to attain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to do the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves when your desires are telling you otherwise. So it's to uh, to flee from your desires from the from especially when they're sinful desires and going to the to the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves, meaning righteous and good deeds. Uh, another the fifth thing he mentions about how to attain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says also it is uh, searching one's heart and remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, 
by f filling one's heart by uh, mentioning the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and reflecting upon them, understanding them, and uh, understanding and supplicating to him by his divine names and attributes. The sixth thing he mentions is that the person reflects and contemplates over the righteousness, over the goodness and the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you internally and externally. So reflect on that and be a caller to his love. The seventh and he says this is the, the most uh, unique or the most the most uh, amazing and, you know he said it is to totally uh, humble one's heart in its entirely and put one's heart open one's heart and giving it totally to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by being humble and doing those things which please him to barak wa ta'ala and totally relying on him subhanahu the uh, eighth thing that he mentions is to separate oneself when during the separate and, and be alone you know, uh, almost meditating and being in a meditative state away from people, especially during the times when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends to the lowest heaven. So as we know from the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in which he said, Yanzulu Rabbuna tabarak wa ta'ala uh, kullu ila sama dunya kullu thuluth al-layl al-akhir. That the Prophet ﷺ said that our Lord descends to the lowest heaven every last third of the night. And then he asks, and he, he, he asks, who's seeking my forgiveness, I forgive him. Who, you know, is seeking my mercy, I will give him mercy. And who's, who's asking of me, who's supplicating to me, and I will give him. So this, these times, these special times after Fajr and in the depths of the night, being alone and humbling yourself and worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that these things will gain you help gain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the ninth thing is to sit with those who are beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those who are beloved and those who are truthful so perhaps this would be the people of knowledge <coughs> sitting in the circles of dhikr, meaning the circles of ilm and the circles of, you know, those who are, you know, being in the good company of people who you love for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they are people who illustrate goodness and they practice and appear to have great goodness and, and taqwa. So being in those those gatherings, this will also help you to gain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being in those gatherings means that you will gain the benefit of, of those gatherings and that you won't speak unless there's a benefit to speak. You know, don't uh, have kalam illa walau kana fi uh, illa yani if there is only maslaha uh, kalam that there is benefit in, in the speech that you're uh, you're speaking so not wasting time in gatherings where it's just sin sinfulness and then he mentioned the last thing he said Muba'ida kullu sabab yuhawl bain al-qalb wa bain Allah azza wa jal bitasarraf naam so he says that the last way to gain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that a person is far away 
from every reason that will come in between your heart and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that you are, if, if there's gatherings and if there are people who only have negative and only spread evil and wicked, uh, wicked speech or just wasted speech or a waste of time, you know, they're taking up valuable time that you could be spending that time trying to draw nearer to your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you want to be away from those types of gatherings that are negative and based upon evil. Uh, Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah ta'ala, he, in his book, az zuhd uh, it was mentioned in narration on Qala Mutraf ibn Abdullah ibn Shukhair, rahimahullah ta'ala, and he said, Inna ahabba ibadillah ilallahi ashukur ashabir الذي إذا أبتل أبتلي صبر وإذا أعطي شكر. so he said uh, مطرف ابن عبد الله الشخير he said رحمه الله تعالى he said that the most beloved servant of Allah to Allah is the one who is grateful and patient. And that when he is tested, he is patient. And when he is uh, given something, you know, a blessing, he is thankful. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us, bless us to be of the shakirin and the sabirin. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad.